if you're so interested. The proof of the optimality of lentil ziv is somewhat similar, and it's in the literature. So if, uh, if you're so interested, you can, you can look it up on your own. So instead of lentil ziv, here's, let's call this uh, uh, modified lentil ziv. What we're going to do is we're going to let the, the history k be infinite. So there's, a, there's no limit on the history. We, we have every, in, in memory, we store everything that has occurred. Um, instead of storing, instead of uh, looking for the longest length that has occurred, we're going to fix the length. So in other words, we're going to basically partition um, we're going to partition the source into blocks of n bits, and every n bits will look through history to find the, the time that, that that sequence has already occurred. Now, uh, we're also going to assume, not only are we going to assume that there's no limit on history, but we're, already, we're going to also assume that uh, an infinite uh, source length Already available. So, in other words, looking through uh, history, we're going to assume that this algorithm has already been running since the beginning of the universe, or even before that. It's been it's been running uh, for an infinite amount of time. So, therefore, uh, what that means is that if I take a block of n bits, the probability that that is somewhere in the history uh, is one, because uh, no matter as long as the sequence is, pro is possible, in other words, as long as, uh, as long as any particular sequence has non-zero probability, then that sequence must have occurred at some point in the past, at some point in the infinite past. So, using all of these properties, the reason why this is simplified is because, okay, remember what we encoded, we had to have the flag as to whether this had occurred or not. We had to encode the length, and we had to encode the position. So now, length is fixed, you don't have to encode that. We're assuming that an infinite amount of the past history is available, so therefore everything that can occur has occurred at some point in the past. So therefore all we have to encode is position. And in fact, what we are going to encode is um, We're going, yeah, what we're going to encode is the position with respect to the current. In other words, um, uh, if this is now, we're going to encode the position with respect to now. So in other words, if, uh, if I have to look uh, k bits into the past to find the beginning of, the, uh, uh, the beginning of uh, this sequence, then I'm going to encode this as k. Isn't that bad? What? Because you probabilistically, keyword that you're looking for could be, like, could have occurred once an infinite time ago. Yes, so... Um, so encoding an infinite distance would be impossible. Um, so if the sources are ergodic, okay. what we're going to, uh, there are various lemmas that we're going to show. One is um, the expected amount of time that has elapsed uh, prior to now excuse me, the expected amount of time that has elapsed since the last time this sequence occurred is proportional to 1 over the probability of the sequence. And because the sources are Gaudic, um, the time average and the ensemble average are the same, so that amount of time is, expect is in fact expected to elapse. So uh, you won't get a problem where things have occurred an infinite amount of time ago um, with probability 1. If, if um, I mean, the nice thing about all of these ar averaging arguments is that if a very low probability event occurs, then you can handle it in an arbitrary way almost, and it doesn't affect it doesn't affect the average because basically you can, uh, if something is sufficiently low probability, you can handle it however you like, and the average is, is not really affected. It's kind of like um, um, your average wealth, your ex 
expected wealth over the course of your life is not affected by buying a lottery ticket because the probability of winning the lottery is so low. Uh, So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna record the the amount of time in the past that this sequence that uh, that whatever sequence I have now uh, the first occurrence in the past of, of this sequence that I have now. Uh, so position I E first occurrence in the past. of the current n-bit sequence. Now, your question is not trivial because, I mean, uh, k is not necessarily infinite, but k can be there's, there's no bound on k. It can be unboundedly large. But it's, it's, uh, all we can be assured of is that it's not infinite. 